Hi everyone, Terry Awasco with Work Tango. I see a lot of familiar names um, with uh, lots of our clients uh, and their wonderful leaders who have joined us here today. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is the first of a series of leadership training webinars that we're hosting uh, to help everyone uh, learn a little bit during this uh, really uncertain time. Um, we are excited to partner with our friends at Culture Crafters who will be facilitating, facilitating today. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to our dear friends at Culture Crafters. Hi, thank you, Terry, so much. I appreciate it. We're also excited to partner with Work Tango and to support your clients with the new reality. And it looks like it's going to stay for a while. I just wanted to say hello, good morning, good afternoon. I'm on the Eastern Time Zone. My co facilitator, Angela, is on the Pacific Time. She's joining us from California. So wherever you are, some of you might be in Europe, uh, some of you might be listening to this later. Uh, we just want to welcome all of you to our webinar on how to three steps to run effective virtual meetings that is going to be very different from having one-on-ones today is all about team meetings effective virtual meetings and we're going to introduce you to some structures what we have learned over the years yes welcome everyone my name is angela and i am so excited to be here today with you and just to start with an acknowledgement to the difficult times that we're all experiencing no, no matter where you are in the world and in a in a more kind of a twist in a in a, in a funny hilarious way um, when Anya and I were thinking how can we acknowledge COVID-19 and quarantine and but at the same time kind of lift people in uh, uh in in the webinar we we thought that this was kind of a hilarious thing to to look at what are the things the skills the practical skills that we have learned because of these difficult times and we know for sure that we all have learned how to cut your own hair this is the bang <laughs> that is the result here it is chopped uh to really no look whatsoever and 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 picking groceries and avocado without touching them and i and i was telling anya i'll add the one personal one that i realized is those little plastic bags in the grocery stores where you put your produce in i i, I always have to confess and come clean with you i always used my finger on you know on my lips to to be able to open those those plastic bags and i can't do that anymore so that's <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I want you guys to put it in the chat. I'm already seeing Sharon who says using technology to connect with my team, work without a printer. And for the transparency, <laughs> like I've been writing my notes because my printer is at work and I can't access my office. So I feel you, Sharon. I'm also practicing my handwriting skills because I can't print anything. What else, guys? Put in the chat, like what are some new skills that you have learned in the last or forced to learn in the last four to eight? eight weeks as we've all been facing and, COVID. And the way that you do that is going into that chat. There's there's a control bar on Zoom if this is the first time. So find that chat and and feel free to share those uh, those really handy skills <laughs> that we have added to to our bag of, of humanity, right? Of things that we know to do as humans. Uh, I, I love I love the how to bake bread, how to groom my very shaggy dog. Totally, <laughs> I'm learning how to homeschool kids. We have three children with my partner, and I thought I would never ever do homeschooling, and now we're learning how to do it. And I've also learned that kids don't really know anything. I don't know what they have been doing in school for the last six years. So yeah. that's been a new skill of um, becoming a teacher at home. Yes, the necessities, oh. right? Yeah. My God, the necessities. Hey, I, I feel you. We are, as humans, we are creatures of adaptability, of resilience. So it's really impressive the things that we can do. Okay, so as you share, um, and uh, and we'll we'll really have a joy to read those comments as as we go after the webinar. But we want don't want to take time away from from what we we promised here to share with you today. And so let's let's go with some introduction. Who are these two people? These two women you're going to spend the rest of the hour with? Uh, 
I'm just noticing my Zoom says Anya Romanova and my introduction says Anya Soto. I am in a transition of changing my last name and my whole life is a mix. I have my one legal name, my mirrored name. I'm a co-founder of Culture Crafters. Uh, after working with leaders globally as an executive coach since 2013, I've noticed some patterns and I've noticed that leaders are the ones creating toxic environments when they're not capable to create trust and psychological safety. So three years ago, I got together with a group of consultants and uh, started the Culture Crafters Company, where we go to organizations we used to go and fly and help them create a culture that is more autonomous, that is safe. We believe that when you don't have safety, people take direction. If I don't know where I belong, if I don't know what I bring to the company, I'll never take risks. So Culture Crafters is all about helping organizations craft their culture. And today, how it's relevant to this webinar is running effective meetings is your culture. What is your culture of meetings? And then we have organizational culture, but I personally believe that every manager, every team leader has their own microculture. It's like a subculture that you get to create. And hopefully today we'll show you some of the tools and concepts on how to do that. That's me. And, and I am the fortunate one to be it, 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 in, in, as a guest right, in, uh, in this webinar, collaborating with Anya and, uh, and the ambitious um, meaning and, and purpose of her work that she just shared with you. Um, I have a, many years, you can see there are 20 more years, I stopped counting at 20. Clearly, I started in kindergarten when I uh, initiated, started my career in corporate. So that's what I bring to the table. I bring the experience and sometimes also the painful lessons that personally I learned as a leader, as a, a trainer of leaders in, in corporate. Um, also, you can see there, leadership junkie. I really am obsessed about leadership and good leadership. The leadership that Anya was describing as inspirational, as the leadership that can, pe can bring people together, can connect them, and can get the best out of people and have them, allow them to do their best work. So I like to think of myself as this little, little leadership junkie, really addicted to good leadership and good leadership is go is what are going to talk about today i also want to connect back to the skills i know some people are starting to grow their own gardens and their own veggies and herbs and i like to say that we're in the business of growing people <laughs> we are the gardeners i love that metaphor yes we are and just like a garden you keep tending it because otherwise everything dies mm -hmm. And so here's what we committed to, uh, to deliver today um, in, in our own way. But what we are going to touch upon is how to handle this virtual world that has for many of us turned into virtual from one day to the other, where now you're required to be productive, to make the best out of the medias, the channels that we have. And it's not always easy, right? Because ultimately what we deal with is still and will always be people. Okay. We're gonna talk a little bit about, oh, you said regulating emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Regulating emotions virtually, I find this has become a big challenge for people. We cannot avoid talking about it. So we'll touch upon a little bit. How do you regulate emotions virtually when we're not together in the same space? Because we think it's a really, really um, a challenge for a lot of leaders. And of course, reading virtual space, which is for me and Angela, this was the most challenging one. It's like, how do you teach? Because I feel like it comes with years of experience. How do you read the space? So if yeah. you are uh, curious about that, that would be an interesting um, concept to explore. And yeah. we are hoping and planning to leave some time for Q&A. So as we teach you, if you have some questions, write them down. Um, we will not be really attending the chat as we're teaching, but we will have a Q&A session and you'll be able, you can use Q&A uh, at the right bottom. You can see the Q&A kind of like different tabs, so you can put some questions there, but we will attend to them at the end of the session. 
And yeah. of course, use the chat. Use the chat throughout the session. Right. If you have comments, if you have uh, suggestions, tips, this is a peer learning. I really want to encourage us co-creating this experience. This is one of the things we'll be teaching. You and I and Angela, we all get to co-create the next 50 minutes. Right. And so I like to think that we all have a level of responsibility. Definitely Anya and I have the level of responsibility of making this learning engaging and valuable for you. At the same time, you have a role in this, right? So ask for what you need. If this is really not touching what your need is these days, just let us know. And if nothing else, this is something good that we know Anya and I can elaborate more and, and provide more information about that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so let's keep it interactive when the questions or comments are relevant to what we're saying as we go, feel free to use the chat for something that may be taken offline or is, is maybe something that could possibly take us off the track, then put it in the Q&A and we'll acknowledge it at the end. We'll leave one 10 more thing, be careful with sensitive information. I know there are a lot of people who are mm. on the webinar right now. There are people who watch the recording. Share your experience. Be careful with sensitive information because there are many, many different clients of WorkTango who will be on the webinars or watching the recording. Right, that's a good point. While they're not going to read directly the chat, uh, but if it's something that Anya should not speak out loud, uh, then just be mindful of that. Okay. Let's dive in. Haha. -ha. Let's dive in with creating some relevance, which is very relevant mm -hmm. to the work that we're doing. And can you answer in the chat for us, which is also will give us some, some structure to this conversation today. How is running effective and engaging virtual meetings relevant to your role and your career right now? We know that you are in uh, a variety of industries. Um, some of you are in high tech. Some of you are in, in retail commerce. Some of you are in education. So our commitment is to craft it to the need, uh, or what at least we think are your needs, but you know, again, uh, help us with how is it relevant? Why is it important? And I know also there are different um, roles that you play. Some of your managers, some of your team leads, some of your HR partners. So we want to see how is this relevant? Uh, put it in the chat and we'll read it. What we're doing right coming. now, as we're going to teach you things, we're also going to role model. Um, when you ask questions, have some pause and allow time to answer. We see this all the time on meetings. <laughs> People ask a question and they go on to the next uh, thing. So allow some time for people to think about it. How is this relevant? Maybe this is the first time you're asking yourself this. Is it actually relevant to my role and what is the relevance? That's right. So the first golden nugget that we're sharing with you today as facilitators and people that are coordinating and leading discussions in a classroom or a virtual settings, how many times is, does anyone have any question? And then, okay, let's move on. No, count to seven. There's the seven seconds rule. Count to seven to be quiet for seven seconds because they're thinking. And I'm sure you will always get a question. <laughs> Okay, uh, anything in the chat that is uh, worth sharing with us, with everybody? Yeah, as a senior leader, Jamie said, um, I'm communicating daily with the team during this mm -hmm. crazy time. Right. Another comment is trying to do virtual meetings in my staff in two offices during our first ever remote working from home. Uh, and, and it's a struggle. And yeah, I want to acknowledge that some people have been working remotely and it's not new for them. I have daily conversations it's like, man, nothing changed in my life. But for some of you, like this is a whole new ball game, a new reality where we can't control, when we can't micromanage, I can't stop by somebody's office. People can't have lunch with me, ask me questions. There's again, like it's, like it's such a need for building trust. I trust you as a leader that you will get your job done. And that requires very different skill set. Yeah. Um, Kaylee said, we are relevant without that personal connection with the team. It's hard mm. to ensure the team feels supported. 
Yes. yes. So we'll uh, we'll reverse engineer in a way that uh, and and give you some really practical tools that that can help with that for sure. I love a comment from Sharon that it's all about connecting with people and keeping them in. Engage, making yes. them feel safe, building trust so they can yeah. move to safe where working from home seems normal and we can move on work to getting more productive. And also I wanted to say, like, I read an article and I'll be happy to share it with you where they said over 56% will continue to work from home. Right. That there are many organizations in the future that will actually not have offices. We're seeing it as a huge expense. So not only it's important to learn now, I'm a strong believer that this is our future. And I want to equip you with the skills. If you want to be relevant in the marketplace, you will need to develop skills to run and be an effective manager and a team leader virtually, remotely, where you can work anywhere in the world. And what I love about it, it helped me understand that I can live anywhere in the world. I can take my kids anywhere in the world. I can, like, it's such an important skill. So don't see it as a COVID-19 skills. This is here to stay. Right. Uh, and there's, there's some values in learning these skills, in learning these new things. And, and also, you know, they'll come handy uh, even going forward. So, yeah, I think they are in the right place. Awesome. All right, let's get started. Yeah. Let's get going. Okay. okay. So here's how Anya and I have condensed and converged all the research, all the information. I don't know about you, but since this quarantine, I daily I receive emails and 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 articles and blogs. Everybody's trying to look at how do we make this virtual world work for us. And so we have condensed, as I said, all that research, all, all the, the, the science and, and the experience, because you know, we, we bring that experience too, into these three keys. If you don't remember anything else, remember these three keys today. The first one, and we'll go, we're going to go one by one, of course. So the first one is structure and flow. Then we'll talk about connection. And then we'll go into the big why. So three main keys for vir effective virtual meetings. Let's start with the first one. Structure and flow sounds like a polarity, doesn't it? Sounds like, like a contradiction, something that do don't, doesn't coexist together. And so, and that's why it's so important. You need some structure, but not rigidity to create some flow but not chaos. And so let's dig into this first key. When we talk about structure, it's really some hard edges that you provide to these people even before they get into that meeting. And that what that allows, allows the human brain to relax, to be open. So the science that we have behind this idea of structure and flow comes really from positive psychology and, and from, from the safety that we have to feel as human, right? To when we go into something that is uncertain, that we are not clear of, right? Imagine a meeting that just shows up on your calendar. You don't know what you're needed. You don't know what value you bring. So a lot of times you don't even know the agenda. So you see how there are all things that you can do as a teacher, as the supervisor, as the leader for that team, even ahead of time to create that container so that people can come and be at their best and be in flow. So that's what we mean with structure to create that flow, to, pe to put people at their best, to do their best work. And I also want to add that with the diversity and inclusion work that we talk about bias and when our brain doesn't have information, it fills it up with assumptions. Why am I invited to meet it? I'm going to make up so many stories if I don't know. 
it's our need to create that clarity and certainty. So this is where you want to prevent it. You want to make it very clear. Like we call it highly interactive and clearly relevant. Like this is why you're invited to this meeting. This is what will happen. Give people that certainty so they can relax instead of coming in already protective, already defensive, already, you know, not knowing what to expect. Right. And so set the stage is really that first principle behind creating psychological safety. And, and you're probably familiar with this term. There's many, many studies, research done by uh, the professor uh, Amy Edmondson, who's really behind this term of psychological safety that teams at Google have discovered and made famous because when, when Google research on what is behind the best teams, so what are, what's behind that one ingredient, one element that is behind the best teams that do their best work. And so they really found out that it wasn't necessarily the who came together, but right? it was the how was the how they were working together. So this, this idea and, and knowledge around psychological safety is very, very, very important. And where we see that, right, that polarity, that dichotomy, it's really in nature. If you think of our brain, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, is that balance of that polarity of structure and flow. And probably, right, in neuroscience, if there's anyone that is familiar with psychology in this call, will uh, we'll understand really deeply this concept. So we're really trying to find that balance even ahead of time for these people. The left side of the brain is the part of the brain that wants to focus on things, that can describe things to the, the extreme detail. And that's very important, right? That's necessary, necessary work. The engineers in here, the high tech people in this call definitely know how that is a very important part of what you do every day. At the same time though, there is the, the meta view of things, the whole picture of things, our right part of the brain that doesn't necessarily work with words and descriptions can see a whole connection of dots, right? As, as a whole, but not in the detail. So you see how both of these are important to put people at their best to, so that they can do their best work. One thing I want to add with the leaders, we call them high level functioning. This is the maturity of leaders, the leaders that we work with and we develop. I call them integrated adults or integrated leaders. It's not just leaders, it's like adults as people. That is like, you can be highly analytical and compassionate. You see empathetic is on the left, like you, you need both on the right side. Up, decision making, like you're very clear, you make tough decisions, but you also secure in self-worth. You know the value that you bring. Abstract concepts, like we're gonna introduce you to some metaphors with agenda and bullet points and purpose. Like that is the integrated adult. You're not one or the other. The range, your range, you can, you can be both. Like we gotta like decide that we need to have, I know Angela, you mentioned, it's like we think that some people are left brain and some people are right brain. Like half of our brain is not working. That is not true. We have both. We both, we, all of us, we have left brain and the right brain, like right. all of it. Yeah, it's like thinking I'm left-handed. And so what, what do you do? You, you, you have the right hand tied behind your back? Clearly not. Yes, you're a left-handed and you're probably dominant with that hand, but you use both. And the same, the same for us, this, the, the example of the brain is just an example, right? It's, it's for as we are as humans, that we have all these talents and you want, you want all those talents to walk in metaphorically in a virtual meeting. You want them to be open. And so speaking of right side of the brain and pictures and associations, right, Anya, let's bring this metaphor into yeah. the training today. So we were talking about like, what is the metaphor, right? Because we know, guys, you're not going to remember everything. But we thought, okay, let's, let's talk about dinners. Like when you, you are the host of a dinner party, you're going to think about the menu. You're going to think about like, okay. I would have a conversation with my partner and say, hey, let's host a dinner. I haven't seen our friends in such a long time. What can be the theme of the dinner? Why are we getting people together? What's gonna be the menu, right? That is the structure. I'm gonna be inclusive and say, oh, like, you know, Susie, she's a vegetarian. Like, can we have some options for her? Someone is gluten-free. Someone doesn't need this. Like, we need to be inclusive and create that structure for people. 
But once you have the dinner structure, you want to allow for a flow. So everything we're going to talk about today, we're going to bring back to this dinner metaphor. metaphor. The guests yes. in your virtual meeting, who is in attendance? What are the types of people? I also, it's really important to talk about mindset. Here's where I want you to remember, like to keep going back to the dinner metaphor. Uh, we talked with Angela and I said, you know, as the leader, as a facilitator of a meeting, is one of my participants hasn't said anything, hasn't contributed, I take it personally. But when you have a dinner party and one of your guests didn't say anything, I would go to my partner and say, hey, did you notice like Joey was really quiet? He didn't really engage with anybody. I think something is going on. Maybe I should call him tomorrow and have a one-on-one -on -one versus I suck at hosting dinner parties. That's not where I go. Like, why do we take it so personally versus seeing as meeting participants might be going through something? Um, yeah. So this, this helps you understand, you know, we could, we could be here and look at all all the details of all the prep work that you need to do but then again everybody is in a different industry everybody is in a different company and so this metaphor helps you understand that just like you were organizing a dinner party you don't just wait for the people to show up to go with an agenda right there's a lot of prep work that needs to be done ahead of time so that you can create that experience that you want for those people at the dinner party. So the same here, that structure of flow gives you the, the form to create that experience. And okay. one thing I want to add with like boundaries, right? As a host of a party, you want to create boundaries, meaning you don't want anybody to crush the party, but you also want to create a connection. Again, like there's constant balance. I am responsible for this webinar. I don't want anybody to be attacked at the meeting. I don't want passive aggressiveness. I want to create boundaries, but I also want to create connection. Again, at the dinner party, you're not going to attend to every meeting. You're gonna, not going to micromanage and control. You create a space, a container for people to meet, and then you let them have their own experience. Right. Again, this is the experience. I don't think we're spending enough time now. All the articles you are seeing online is about structure. It's about tools. We're forgetting the emotional, like how people felt before they came to a meeting and how they feel after. What was the aftertaste? What's the experience of these meetings? And the other thing that came to mind for me, Anya, is the roles and responsibilities. I, mm -hmm. I, I know that my spouse is in charge of drinks. No matter what happens during the dinner, I never think of, of, of the drinks to the, the guests to have their wine or sodas in their, in their glasses is, is his responsibility. And so, so the same for people, right? They knowing ahead of time, why are they there? What do they add to that conversation? Right? They're really good at that. You're the SME for that. I really want to hear your ideas when we go into the meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. So just setting that stage. Okay. And here's a tool right, to, to set that stage to, to kind of create those, that understanding. It's, it's almost like a social contract, if you may, but it's important for people, again, to have that certainty so that they're not left to making up stories or to their own biases. And so what do we say around this an alliance, Anya? What's the best way? This is, I, I like to call it, remember in the beginning, I said when we help organizations create culture, what is the culture of our meetings? What are some rules? What are some boundaries that we want to have? What's okay and what's not okay? And I think if, even if you had some design alliance before how you work with your team meetings, I think this is a good time now to redesign and realign. We already have some understanding based on the last four, six, eight weeks, what's working, what's not working. I like to talk about also equity and equality. When we first started with COVID-19, there was a lot of things like everybody needs to have a computer. Everybody needs to have a schedule. Everybody, like we all think that everybody needs the same, right? That's equality. Everybody needs the same thing. Equity is the belief that everybody needs different support. Everybody needs different things. Some people are productive in the morning. Some people are productive in the afternoon. Some people only have one computer. They have to share it with the kids. So asking people, what does support look like? What do you need? 
this is also a belief that developing your people on your team, asking for what they need instead of going into blame and gossip and all of those toxic behaviors. What do you need? How can I support you? That's the design alliance. Like how do you create those agreements with your team as a whole and with people individually on your team? Right. So those, those are like ground rules and, and everybody is different. And for some people, for some team, and that's you to know what's the best way for some people, having them in the meeting, in the actual meeting, taking five minutes at the beginning and asking things like, how will we know that we're doing good work? What everybody needs today that may be different from the last time that we we came together, right? Or for some people could be some has to be done ahead of time in more of a private setting, more of a one-on-one setting, because we all know everybody is different, extroverts, introverts, people that are more open, people are kind of shy away from, from sharing. So as the leader, you really have to understand your people so that you can do something like this, right? At this, this ground rules, this way of working together, what's okay, what's not okay, what everybody, anybody needs to feel seen, to feel heard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just an example, right? How do I create? In my classes, virtual, non-virtual, I always design the alliance. Another way of expressing it, you've heard me today use this term of container, right? those hard edges so that everybody can move freely. I like really to set, set that guardrail right, that can keep the flow in within. And uh, yeah, just basic questions. What's okay? What's not okay? What do you need today? So, so this just a very, very powerful tool. One of the ways we said use chat to participate, do like yes. respect confidentiality, do not share any sensitive information. Those are all the things that we discuss. And of course, in our meetings, we'll show you more. We'll have a skills lab next week that we'll talk about how do you actually practice the skills. But those like you've already seen a couple of examples how Angela and I set the container. We'll have time for Q&A. So you know right. when to ask questions. Here's what is okay. Ask questions. We will not be attending to the chat as we're teaching the content, but we will attend at the end of the meeting. Again, clarity, clarity, clarity. You, we the are commitment, right? The commitment that we, space. yeah, so which was even different than the agenda. Yeah. So you see how we're really giving you the theory, but really look at how we walk the talk, right? With for this webinar, mm -hmm. we we mm -hmm. applied all these concepts in the way that we designed clearly this, uh, this webinar is not just theory. <laughs> okay. Shall we move on to key number two? That's a key number two, connection. I like to think connection before content and kind of like on the segue of the design alliance, right? You're really bringing them together to connect them as people over the content and the agenda. And here's the work that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also connection. I find some people, I, and I felt that even today, I was like, we're talking too much about like what we do. We need to move on. Like there's this need to let's move on into the content. Don't ever underestimate creating a connection with your people, taking time to check in. How are the kids? How is the help? Create that initial connection. Super important. Yeah. There are two we, rules. That you like, oh, go ahead. Say? No, no. Do you go with the two rules? And I feel like also I want to say about connection is like, it's connection to the content. It's connection to you as a facilitator. It's connection to why we're here. All of these things, like connection is so much more than a relationship. The two rules is don't start the meeting until you have heard from everybody. This is by Peter Block. And another one, don't start the meeting until everyone spoke to another person. And again, you can create that in the chat. You can create it in the poll you can another way i like doing it as part of design alliance where you rotate the team leads who's going to lead the meeting so we can all participate and we can all rotate in this so those are like two rules of a, creating a connection before yeah in a in a in the real world right in a face-to-face -face in person you get that and you don't even realize it's it's a gift that you get if if you're late to that meeting and they convened ahead of you and so they're chit chatting and they're, they're warming up the space right connecting with each other in the virtual unfortunately you don't necessarily have that 
And so, but there's ways really to create, as Anya has mentioned, maybe with the chat, maybe create as people come in to that meeting, create breakout rooms. Zoom is phenomenal for this. Breakout rooms with two or three of them and just let them, you know, chit chat so that they can connect and then and maybe send them out with a question, right? Like the, the original question that we asked you about the extra skills that you're uh, getting and then they'll come back and and they'll have they'll have that connection established and so you're more ready to to start in the beginning work. of the chat some of you said like building trust right building the connection and building yes. trust that is like key to effective meetings and here's the thing if you don't follow the rules if you don't establish connection there are two things that will happen it's like i either want to connect with you and i am uh, attracted to you or i want to avoid you there's right. really a tool. It's either the threat or like, I want to connect with you and you get to choose as a leader. Yeah. And especially these days with all the uncertainty that we have and the no control over things that we have. So really there's, there, there's, there's always these triggers that are present consciously or unconsciously that you really can't do much about. Right. And so, we also wanted to share with you today a little bit of neuroscience research. This comes from David Rock. He's the founder of the Neuro Leadership Institute, NLI. They're very famous for their growth mindset work and research and, and the SCARF model. And so for you as leaders or as teachers to keep in mind is there's only two conditions of human behavior. Like Anya said, they either want to come close to you and want to be more open towards you or they're threatened and so they're they shut down and they want to run away from you and, and so it, there's yeah go ahead i think we all have bosses right like there's some <laughs> bosses that you want to avoid at any cost you go in the hallway you see them and you're like every time i see them they give me something to do like i want to avoid them and there's some other boss who are like i wish i met them in the corridor like i love having conversations with them it always adds so much to my work so it's like which leader do you want Want to be this model helps with like social situations right how do we create and especially now the I'm, I'm gonna go over like what is the status it's importance of people and importance like I am valuable I know what I bring so when someone starts to threaten your credibility on the meeting that's where we go into shut down you feel uh, you know the threat mode and we've all seen it, like people jump on the meeting and we're going to talk a little bit about criticism, but that is the status. And especially now with COVID-19, if you have a status in your organization, it can be threatened. That's where we feel it now. Yeah. Certainty is how well you can predict the future. Again, right now, nobody can predict the future, but this is really certainty. I know where I stand in my organization, right? That's what creates it. And again, we have complete lack of it. Autonomy relates to having control over our environment. And this well, is- Well, when I think of autonomy, of the lack, total lack of autonomy, Nanya, think of COVID-19, yeah. right? What kind of autonomy do we have on this yeah. then? Right? This, and that's the, the feeling powerless in, in, in front of this pandemic. It's like, yeah, we know we, we can take measures to keep safe, but we really have no control over how we're gonna end this and, and when is it gonna end? And I think autonomy is feeling on your team that I have a choice. That's when people like, right? If you want to create the reward system and you want to be a leader where people want to spend time, creating autonomy is helping people see like we are a choice. We create a reality. We can again ask for what we need. Sense of relatedness is a sense of fitting in. Sense of like I belong. And I'll show you how that connects to different emotions. But this feeling of like this is my team. This is my company. Like I belong here. And fairness is we all feel like, right, am I being treated fairly? Like, was this evaluation fair or not? Because the minute I feel like uh, the rules are not the same for everybody and I'm not being treated fairly or I'm not feeling respect, subconsciously I go into that threat response, fight or flight. And it's all of it is subconsciously, this is what drives our behaviors. And we will do anything to avoid being seen poorly by your colleagues or not knowing what we're doing or like feeling the threat, right? We'll do anything to avoid it. So these are unconscious until you have the intelligence to make that consciousness. Mm -hmm. And someone, one of the first 
comments that you read, Anya, from the chat of how is this relevant for you is, is really knowing these things, having these notions so that you can, as I mentioned, reverse engineer and make sure that people, so bringing in those insights so that you can create that environment where they are open, right? And they are on this green arrow. They want to come yeah. towards, they're leaning in. In. They want to do their best work. They have the requirements, what they need to do their best work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And now we'll go into a little deeper into this emotion, how to handle emotion and how to read the emotion. We, as Annie and I, like to think about this as a landscape of emotion. There's really, with the diversity of that landscape right? Everybody is different and everybody can be different at any given day, even the same person, right? Depending on the circumstances. And so as leaders, first thing is awareness. And then now that you know, you have to do something about it, right? And so re we really like this sen sentence, this quote from Brene Brown, and I'm sure you're all familiar. So sometimes people outside of the US may not be as familiar. So she's a PhD researcher, spent decades researching emotions. And, 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 and so this, you can really spend a reasonable amount of time attending the fear, the feelings, whatever people show up into that meeting or into that conversation, or on a reasonable amount of time, if you don't take that at, at first, and a reasonable amount of time dealing with the consequences of not having dealt with those emotions. And, and I wonder in the chat, some of you, I wanna see what is your biggest struggle right now with people? And when we talk about problematic behaviors, we talk about gossip, we talk about back channeling, we talk about meeting after the meeting it's like nobody said anything at the meeting but we are having another meeting after the meeting right now I'm really gonna say how I feel about this so I wonder for you as leaders in a chat and again we can we can create like how similar our challenges are right because often we hear from leaders well it's not my job to manage emotions I'm not their therapist and we're saying well if you don't attend to emotions if you don't acknowledge what's in the space it will like those emotions will fester and they will create toxicity. Yeah. So for all of you, um, take a couple of minutes just to put in a chat. What and it could also be a comment, very candid comment of, I know there's something there, but I can't grasp it. And I really yeah. can't filter it or interpret it. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely okay. I, What's the biggest struggle you have right now with your people when it comes to emotions and managing emotions? I'm, I'm yeah. curious to see what you guys put. In what state, what mood that show up um, expressed or not, right? Because there's also the non-expression of that emotion, but you you know that there's something going on. Yeah, all of it. We're waiting just in the chat. I know people are typing because this is huge, right? Right now, especially as we talked about uncertainty, people are afraid about their future. They're afraid about their finances. I mean, not they, we, we are all in this together. We're afraid of uh, the kids that were again, homeschooling, what's gonna happen to our jobs? What's gonna happen to economy, to our parents? Like, are we gonna get sick? So it's like, what are some emotions that you are seeing and the struggle and the behaviors that come out of that? Do you wanna move to the next slide, Angela? Yes, okay. so as they elaborate on that, yeah. we'll give them some examples. Mm -hmm. In virtual meetings, not able to understand if the people are really connected with us or not. And how do they right. perceive the points when you can't see the people? Got it. Yes, we're going to get there for sure. We're going to address that. And so uh -huh. here's, how do we call this? Like a filter, Anya, right? Some, a, a lens 
to look at. And then we want to look at different emotions, right? And I said, like next week we're having a skills lab. I really want to translate for you the language of emotions. I don't want to just talk about, oh, someone is like, what we know is someone is mad, sad, or excited. I actually want to help you understand what are the behaviors? How, what's the language of emotions? And here we just wanted to explore four quadrants and you will see we call it energy quadrants too because every emotion has an energy some of them you can see you have high energy and some have low energy bad emotions are not always low energy as you can see being mad is actually very high energy or being sad is very low energy same with brave it can be very high energy or calm and relaxed so i want to talk a little bit what is being brave what does it look like in a corporate setting my understanding, brave is confident. It's a person who has no I new ideas, who contributes to the space, who is willing to take risks because again, they know who they are, they know what they bring. That is a very pleasant, high energy emotion and you wanna follow that energy in meetings when someone shows it. Calm, we call it green. That's why we put like green is again, think of it as like growing. Something is growing in the space, right? That's the green. It's about, it's being relaxed. It's about being calm. It's about feeling included. This is the feeling of like, I belong. This is my team. I don't need to protect myself. I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to be perfect. Like I belong, those are my people. So are we saying, Anya, that emotions are contagious? We are saying emotions are very contagious. And I'll speak emotions. about it like anxiety, like all of it, it's really yes. contagious. And even in the virtual settings, yeah I, even in a virtual world unfortunately so, and and even if you are have no consciousness around this they're perceived our body perceives this our intelligence that goes beyond our mind perceives those emotions around us even in a zoom call it's it's amazing how that can happen and, and so knowing feel. yeah you, you often feel it you feel the yeah. energy I also want to say, we avoid being like, mad is argumentative. Mad is someone who is like challenging. And often we avoid it, but I as a facilitator would rather take someone who is argumentative over someone who is flat. Sad is depressed, checked out. I don't care, tell me what to do, I'll do that. So it, it's not always bad. Like sometimes in that anger, right? It's first of all, we talk about anger is always unexpressed need. It's unexpressed ask or desire. So it's like if we can tap into like someone is feeling really critical, really like challenging you, but it has high energy on a call versus like, again, as I said, blue is sad, depressed, check that. So we're going to share some additional tools in the skills lab as Anya has mentioned. And I think we should go quickly over this because this is a, a uh, intro, intro to that. Um, and someone said, but how do I do it? And, and so really learning the practices of proactive questions, right? Ask open-ended questions that will keep the person in a neutral and open space and in a psychologically safe space, but at the same, able, at the same time able to share. Uh, create one-on-one -on -one time with the participants. What are those tricks? What are those tools that where I can create that one-on-one -on -one time in a Zoom call. And then some additional practices that you, or best practices that you see here, right? How to create relevance with, with telling stories and making some, some connections for them from, from your end as a leader of that meeting. Um, how do you acknowledge what shows up, right? That input and also use humor because there's so much uh, psychology behind it, studies that shows how humor can help switch uh, that energy from what you have and that shows up to what you need it to have to be. Okay, I'll, um, I'm just kind of enough time. So I'm gonna move quickly. Um, here's the, the gif of here's, here's the <laughs> All right, so that was the second key connection before content. And now let's go over the third key, the big why. This is the relevance. We remember things 
that we find relevant for us, that we find valuable for us. And you attending this webinar are no exception, right? If we said something that you really need for what you do every day, I'm sure you're going to remember going forward. And so what we mean with the big why is sifting through the things that are not serving you to to get the golden nuggets and what the, that golden nuggets for us is a simile of of the relevance of the meaning of the purpose why are they there what is the work that needs to be done in uncertain time like the ones that we're experiencing now how can i provide more clarity how can I provide that end goal that we're working towards so that we may know how to get there, but we know what we're working towards? Yeah, I love it. And sifting through is also we talk about, like when people leave comments in the chat, you as a leader, right? If you facilitate a large meeting, you need to find the goal. What, what are the nuggets? What are people saying so I can create learning for everybody? Right. Right. What are the golden nuggets in people, in their emotions? Like you're always, always sifting for that gold with, again, the overwhelm of inputs and information and articles. Yeah. The way that you address, the, the way that you respond can set a tone, sets the tone. And so the choice is what kind of tone do I want to set? And for that, we really like this metaphor of do you want to be a thermometer leader or do you want to be the thermostat leader? Thermometer leader is the leader that just expresses, oh, I see you guys really frustrated about this without taking any action, right? Mm -hmm. Just reporting is the, the weather report. Yeah. Are we taking no action, action or no responsibility? Yeah. And so how do you respond productively to that and actually be a thermostat leader that inspires and creates trust in a transparency of, I see we're very frustrated about this and rightfully so because we don't have the clarity about, about it, but we're gonna get there. So what do we need to do to address this? right? And change that tone and change, regulate the energy in that room. Yeah, I, I think one of the things we're seeing and teaching a lot of leaders right now, you can change energy. Like you have the capacity. Some leaders say, well, today's meeting really sucked. Like it wasn't that good. And we take it as what it is versus like we have the capacity to change when we have that emotional knowledge, right? And we can practice those skills. How do we shift energy if it's not, if it didn't start well? So that's another like, remember, like, am I a thermometer or am I a thermostat that I can shift right. and change? Right. Yeah. And here's some practices of how to look for what to look for sorry in the space what are the things that you look for um is there disengagement so we have we have a, seven minutes left but let's keep it interactive anya right? yeah so, we, we want to yeah. hear from you guys how what are the cues when do you know that people are disengaged what do you think the causes this, yeah. and what are the cues so again, yeah. we'll so we, some of you in the chat. We'll, we're going to give you some, some things to reflect on. So what are the things for disengagement? Where do you look? What do you think are those cues that tell you that they're disengaged? How about connection, right? Kind of goes. Yeah. Um, and then those, what are the visual cues that you get? And believe me, you can get visual cues even if they're off camera. Because what you do or don't do create, has a consequence. It creates an effect. And so even off the camera, you can get some visual, quote unquote, cues. And then the language, and I think we have one more, and the energy level. So this is all the things that we've already discussed with you guys. What creates that connection? What creates engagement and participation, right? Language, when we talk about language of emotions and what are people expressing? What is being said? What is not being said? What's the energy level? Again, when it comes to emotions, are people feeling flat and gloom and blue or there is a high energy? So I'm curious with what are you seeing? What do you know? What are the cues for you as a leader on the meeting? And what are some causes for disengagement? I'd love to hear some. I know we have six minutes left. We have a couple more slides, but we really want to hear from you. This is the peer learning time. It's like, what have you seen so far? Because I know all of us are experts in this space. 
your experts in running meetings and working with teams? And if you're sitting there thinking, should I read the space? That's okay too. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, it, it's, it's a good place to be in that level, raised level of awareness, thinking, oh, I didn't know. That's definitely something that I want to know more of. I, yeah. I want to address yeah, a couple of things. I, I'm seeing already some uh, comments, so guys keep adding to it. Nancy said, managing families at home trying to work from home. People are feeling they need a break and can't get away because there's nowhere to go. So some of you as leaders, you might feel like, yeah, what do I do with that? It's not like I can help them go somewhere. Acknowledging, acknowledging the nostalgia, acknowledging that things are different now, acknowledging that we all miss each other. We miss getting outside of the house. Just again, when you can't, when people give voice to people so they can feel seen by you and heard by you. Um, Karen said lack of interest, lack of understanding in how their work and role connects to the purpose of this meeting or conversation. Yes. That's the disengagement. Yes. There, th there's disengagement. There's something there that is not a knowledge that is not addressed that gets in the way. It's really like that hurdle. And until you remove that hurdle and you, you, you give them a voice and a way to express it, they're not going to be able to move on. They're not going to be able to, to pass and be at their best. Yeah. And again, keep uh, putting it in the chat where we'll address yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep going as you do that. Well, why don't we go quickly over this, which is we're going to go over in greater detail in the practice lab. But Anya, let's, let's just, just give it a I just wanted to give you an intro. idea because right now, like anxiety is a huge one. Stress and anxiety is a feeling of uncertainty and fear. And I want to tell you that sometimes we perceive people as lazy and other people as controlling. So different people connect different again with anxiety. This is our pattern way of behavior. What we're learning is that some people go into under function where they don't feel confident, they can't make decisions, they can't decide. And some people go into the over function. They advise, they rescue, they micromanage people. Just recognizing who are the people on your team, even now in your mind, be like, oh, I can see how some people on my team went and became kind of like control freaks and some others have completely disengaged. <laughs> and just acknowledging those are our pattern behavior. Like this is how we manage anxiety. There are two yeah. types of people. It's procrastination these days is the disease of your best performers can be the disease yeah. of your the high achievers, right? This the rock stars may be paralyzed and, and frozen by procrastination these days. Yeah. And so really understanding of how to acknowledge it and address it is essential to get That's work done. So here's some archetypes that we identify kind of keeping on the, the line with the metaphor that we created at the beginning of the webinar of the dinner party, right? Who shows up at that dinner, which you know what I'm talking about is your meeting, your conversation and on Zoom. And, and so we, we, there's always some patterns. There's so, always some, some personalities that show up that are always there. There's know it all. It, when you ask, does anyone have a question or a comment? That's the person that goes off mute and, and talks at me. Wow. And, and, and everybody is, is tired of hearing always the same voice. And then there's the Yoda, right? And there's the, the truth teller that, that says every, what everybody is thinking. And then we love this master of the rabbit hole because those are the time wasters that take people off uh, the, the track and, and, and time wasters. So, so it's just some practice that we'll do at the, the practice lab. And I'm sure you have more of these okay. archetypes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and here's a summary. So in the last minute or two, uh, we'll stay on. So feel free to stay here. And if you, especially if you have questions, here's the summary for today. Right? If you want to take a screenshot of this, just feel free. Uh, we talked about, we started with structure and flow, right? That form of experience. We took you over the connection before content of how to create the human connection so that it can be open to do the best work. And then how to give meaning, clarity, relevance, and, and guide them through uh, the work that needs to be done. And before we dismiss, right? 
if you like to share with us what concept did you find the most relevant for your role of all these three keys and everything else that we addressed under those three keys. If you can put that in the chat. And I see there's a Q&A, Anya. Mm -hmm. Will a PDF version of presentation be available for participants? Yeah, we would be happy to share with you a PDF version of this, even though we, it's a very minimum because we spoke to most of the slides. Yeah. They're very minimum, but there will be a recording available. So you will be able yeah. to listen to the recording, listen to all of our points. Angela, do you want to go to the next? Yes. I just want to talk a little bit because I know some people will jump off the call. You're welcome to stay. We have decided to do a skills lab because what we're seeing is we go to all these meetings, we go to all these conferences, we're learning new skills. We don't have a space to practice it with our peers. And often we want to practice it without our colleagues, just with some people we don't know. It's like, you know, the best conversations you have like with an Uber driver that you'll never see again. We feel like we don't have to be perfect. So next Friday on May 15th, and Angela, uh, I don't know, I, I will, through Work Tango, we will share a link to our skills lab. Uh, we created a special discount code. It will be two hour, it will be paid skills lab for two hours where we're gonna dive deeper into language of emotions, into creating design alliance, and we will spend the full hour in smaller groups and breakout rooms practicing those skills. Right, it's all so, about practice. Yeah, I will add the link uh, in Eventbrite and look out for email. We will only have 20 people. I know there are a lot of people who want to attend the skills lab. We, we keep it small. We will only have 20 people in the skills lab next Friday. But if you feel like this is relevant and you have a large organization, then connect with the person at Work Tanga and we can bring it inside your organization for your intact teams or cross-functional teams and we can teach it for your organization specifically. But those of you who are individual, maybe contributors, feel free to attend next week and I will try to get a link right now. I know it's in our speaker notes. I don't know, Angela, if you have it on the speaker note and you can put it in the chat. And I still want to hear from a couple of people, uh, what are some skills? What are the skills that you know you can already create with your, um, at your next meeting? So here's the link. Mm, to register, yeah. And work tango yeah. is a discount code. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. And guys, yeah, we're unfortunately, I know we're at the hour. So we're out of time. If there's anything else in the Q and A, um, and if you'll also like to speak and we'll, we can unmute you, we're happy to, to do that. Um, if, yeah. You're welcome, Joanne. I'm happy you found that valuable and helpful. Again, I know there are a lot of concepts and that you want to dive in and practice sharing this idea that I create a microculture, either by mission or commission. Yes, I love that term. It, it is microculture. No yeah. matter what's going on around in your organization, in the rest of the company, you can create that microculture for your team. Sharon, nicely said. I love their mission or commission. Yeah, this is all we're saying. You design as leaders, we have choice. We create our reality. We create our team agreements. We create our values. Like we create relativeness. Like we have that power. And that's what we in our leadership development training, we want to empower you to, again, like choose. What is the environment? I know, Angela, you love, can you talk a little bit about leaders bring the weather? Leaders Bring the Weather, which is a, a Bob Anderson, a, 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 a researcher in leadership, says um, you, you can be the sunny, breezy day or, or you can be the stormy weather, right? That's what you bring in, in the room with you. And so it really is a choice. Who do you want to be? Because just like the, the, the weather affects us, affects our body, affects our thinking, our experience, so is the leader. And so... Yeah, leaders bring uh, the weather. Mary, do you want to finish? Uh, guys, feel free to put some questions in Q&A if there's something you want to, you didn't understand, you want to know more. And Terry, do you want to speak a little bit about how to connect maybe with Work Tango? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so anyone that's interested in uh, having a, a private session for their organization can reach out to their account manager at Work Tango. Um, I will send the slides, the recording and information to connect with Anya and Angela uh, after as well. Um, and if there are any questions, you can let anyone at the Work Tango team know. And I know we have a series of these workshops for the next six yeah. weeks. We're going to explore different topics and you can choose and pick or connect all of them. We would be happy to tell your people that you work with, managers, HR people, invite more people. We have capacity to have up to 1,000 people on this webinar. So please feel free to share and bring your, even your team, people that you want to learn the skills. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you for your interest and participation. See you next yeah. week. See you next week. Thank you, guys.